Hey, what's up, people? Um, welcome back to uh, my video series. So I'm going to try and make this video very simple, straightforward, and short. And it's going to be about Bloodhound and how to make it available um, remotely to access or connect to the Bloodhound database remotely using the Bloodhound GUI. Now, for most of you or some of you who may not know what Bloodhound is and how relevant and useful in any offensive operation i would encourage you to look up on the internet um, there are so many information out there that talks about bloodhound how to use it and how to benefit and make it things a lot easier for you in any offensive operation now typically most people know bloodhound to be available locally on your machine right so when you run bloodhound for instance on a kali or linux box you connect to the Bloodhound database, which is Neo4j. You connect to it locally. Well, there is more than that. You can actually enable the backend database remotely so that you can connect to the Neo4j remotely using the GUI, the Bloodhound GUI. The benefit here is, let's assume you're doing an um, offensive operation or red teaming, and you have team members all over the place may be geographically uh, you know, separated, you can actually make your Bloodhound or your Neo4j database available for all your teammates to be able to connect to it remotely without having to be on a local machine. Okay, so let's go in deep and then um, begin to install the Bloodhound on Kali Linux. And also I'll show you how we can configure Neo4j database to allow for remote connection from the Bloodhound GUI on a remote machine. Let's go in. So it's very, very simple. On a Linux machine, you just type apt install Bloodhound and that should work for you, okay? So let's install it. I have already installed it, so it's not going to install it. <clears throat> now, once you have it installed, it would install your Bloodhound and also install the Neo4j for you. So you don't have to install Neo4j separately so once that is done then you have to set up a neo4j so you can just type in sudo neo4j and then console to see the console and how things are going so this is what's going to happen once you have your bloodhounds installed these are the you know different locations for the neo4j database for your bloodhound okay and then some information that we can use here. One of them is the fact that this is the location of database. So it's going to be on local on 7687. And you can connect to the interface locally on 7474. So this is where you actually open up Bloodhound GUI and connect to this port number. And this is where you have to configure your Neo4j, um, the password and the username. The default is Neo4j for username and the same for the password. In my case, I have already changed it. The moment you bring it up, it's going to force you to change it once you enter the default password. So in my case, I had already created a um, change the password for Neo4j and it's going to try to connect. Okay, so one that is connected, you have the username here, and you have the database listening here on this port. Okay, so now let's go back here. Let's go back to our browser. And um, if we type, let's say, Bloodhound, this is going to bring up the GUI on your local Kali Linux. At the moment you go there, you see the check mark here. That tells you that it has identified the uh, the Neo4j database for you. Okay, you enter the username and password, and these are the credentials you created on the Neo4j here, or the password that you changed for it, right? And that is going to connect to your Bloodhound. So this is what typically people are most people are aware of is running your bloodhound 
locally on wherever you installed your bloodhound okay so this is not nothing new here now let me show you how we can actually enable this remotely but before that let me get my IP address here this IP address uh, not this one okay so this is the IP address on the internal lab and let's go there and then open the bloodhound GUI so if we double click on bloodhound and we open it up of course if we do first of all we will see that there is no database running locally on a local machine what if we replace the local machine with the IP address of the Kali machine and then wait for it and then it will tell you no database found so we can't even log in because it couldn't find a database now let's go back and fix this and make this remotely available so if you look here the configuration for Neo4j is located here okay so what we can do is let me stop the Neo4j and I already um, have it here and then what I'm going to do is let's open up the con let me first list the directory so you have the Neo4j.conf and then sudo nano Neo and then let's go in so this is how the configuration file looks like and there's a whole bunch of things I would encourage you to take your time and then go through the options here but for the sake of this demo I'm going to go straight to where we can allow remote connection to this Neo4j database okay and then of course so these are some of the things that you may want to configure very very nice if you want to change the port number from the default of 7687 you can change it here um, again let's keep going okay so this is what I was looking for so if you can see here <coughs> sorry with default configuration Neo4j only accepts local connections to accept non-local connections on comment this line so if we remove the comment now what we're saying is it should listen on the um, on the interface and then expose it um, uh, you know from every location so that is what a 0.0.0, .0 stands for is any connection remotely should be open on this box uh, or the interfaces so in this case I actually have two interfaces but for my uh, for my um, lab infrastructure the interface that actually um, you know works for my lab is the 172 um, you know subnet so this is going to actually bind it um, the, uh, the interfaces all of them into um, to 0.0.0 .0 and then make it um, you know accessible remotely from any host okay so if we click um, if we do so and then we save it and then I go back and I run the Neo4j again and let's wait until it opens up so now it's telling us that the bolt is enabled on 0, .0, .0, .0, .0 and um, the port number is 7687 again as I have told you you can actually um, you know change this port number um, we can even have we could have changed this if you wanted to have the database exposed which um, I wouldn't I mean the interface for the new 4j exposed to the internet which in this case I don't think is necessary all we need is we want to be able to connect the um, bloodhound GUI to the backend database you know um, server which is our Kali Linux so once this is done now if we go to our workstation and then we click again and then let's see now we have a green check mark now we can connect to to the um, 
the Bloodhound database remotely. Um, again, the benefits are, you know, a lot because if you're working with a team and you want to just have one um, Bloodhound database where all you um, all of your team members can connect and then be able to access information, all you need to do is have all of them having their different Bloodhound GUI and then they will all authenticate or they will all connect to the central Bloodhound database which is running the Neo4j. So I hope this video is useful to some of you because I know most people are normally used to running and accessing um, Bloodhound on your local machine and may not have known that you can actually enable that for remote connection. All right. Again, of course, there are security implications here. So if you're doing a large engagement and you stand up, let's say, a um, Bloodhound database on a cloud machine and you expose it to your team, you want to put in some security measures, you know, some firewall rules to make sure that only your team members can actually connect to the uh, Bloodhound database using their um, Bloodhound GUI. All right. Thank you so much um, for watching this video. If you haven't, I'll continue to advise you to subscribe to this video because I'll be making some of these videos out uh, you know, more, more often. Thank you very much and you have a nice day. Bye-bye.